Hi, today I'm going to discuss the difference between the managed and unmanaged code in C Sharp. But before we do that, uh, let's quickly discuss the common language runtime and P invoke. These are uh, two terms that I'm going to be using throughout this video. So the common language runtime is typically associated with the Microsoft.NET framework, while Net Core, Net5, Net6, Net7, they use the core CLR as its runtime. If you want to learn more about the common language runtime, you can pause the screen now and read what it does. Make sure you understand it since we're going to be using it uh, throughout the video. And another term that I want to discuss briefly, that's the P invoke, which is short for Platform Invocation Services, which is a feature in the .NET languages, which allows developers to call functions in native libraries directly from managed code. So basically from your managed code, you can call unmanaged code, such as unmanaged DLLs, the ones that belong to the Windows API, and so on. And now I'm going to discuss the differences between the managed and unmanaged code, and then we're going to look at some code examples. So the managed code runs within the managed environment, which is provided by the, by the common language runtime. And the CLR, the common language runtime, is responsible for executing the net applications and provide services such as memory management, garbage collection, exception handling, type checking, and several others. When it comes to compilation, the managed code is not directly compiled into a machine-specific code. It is actually compiled first to an intermediate language. And then at runtime, the CLR's just-in-time compiler translates the IL, the intermediate language code to native machine code, which is specific to the operating system. And when it comes to memory management, the memory allocation and deallocation for managed code is actually handled automatically by the garbage collector. This means that you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about cleaning after your own code. This is very different when you use unmanaged code. When it comes to safety, the CLR offers type safety which makes sure that the code does not attempt to access unauthorized memory locations. And yet another feature of the managed code, it's interoperability. That means that from the managed code, even though it primarily interacts with a CLR, you can also code and use unmanaged code when it's needed. Okay, now let's take a look at the unmanaged code. It's an environment, unmanaged code runs outside the net CLR. And examples include applications that are written in C++, C, and also most of the Windows APIs. The unmanaged code, unlike the managed one, is compiled directly into machine-specific code. When it comes to memory management, the developers are actually responsible for allocating and deallocating the memory, which can result in quite a few issues, such as memory leaks, pointer errors, if you're not managing the unmanaged code correctly. And also when it comes to safety, the unmanaged code does not have type and memory safety, which are provided by the CLR. And this can make it more susceptible to issues such as buffer overflows. Now, when it comes to performance, since managed code runs directly on the machine without the overhead of the managed runtime, it can be faster and more efficient. Okay, let's take a look at our first code example, um, which demonstrates how we can use unmanaged code. Okay, the unmanaged code is this part right here. We're going to be using the beep function, which resides in the kernel 32 DLL. This is a Windows DLL, which means that if you try to run this code on a different operating system, something other than Windows, it is not going to work. The kernel 32 DLL is a native Windows library, and by using the uh, p invoke, we are actually able to call the native function from our managed code. This is where we call the b function to play the sound for one second. 800 hertz. Okay, remember that when you use unmanaged code, you as a developer are responsible for cleaning up memory. Now, in this particular case, there is nothing to clean up since the B function itself does not allocate any resources that we as programmers are responsible for releasing. Now, there are different cases 
where we have to worry about deallocating the unmanaged memory. And this is the second code snippet, which I'm going to show shortly. Okay, let's take a look at our second code example, where we actually allocate memory, which is not managed by the net run environment. That means that once we allocate it, we are responsible for creating it. The two functions that I'm using here, the global alloc and the global free, are actually imported from the native kernel32 DLL, which is the native Windows library. And using the first fun function, global alloc, we, we are allocating 100 bytes in the global heap. And this allocated memory is not automatically managed by the net runtime. That means that we need to manually manage it which is exactly what we do right here. We try to free the memory. Okay, and if this function is not executed successfully, we're going to see the message memory free failed. And if it is, we're going to see the message memory free successfully. Now, if I run the program, let me just bring the, call, the um, output window here. We see that the message printed is memory free successfully, which means that our code has executed successfully. Well, basically this code uh, demonstrates how we can allocate and free unmanaged memory in a Windows environment using the native functions which are provided by the kernel32 DLL library. And also demonstrates that properly freeing and allocating unmanaged memory is actually crucial in order to prevent memory leaks. And that was another brief tutorial which looked into the differences between managed and unmanaged code in C-Sharp. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.